Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian in Arlington, Virginia, where we're covering the Surface Navy Association's uh, annual conference and trade show, the 29th time this organization has, has met. Our coverage here is sponsored by Raytheon, and we're honored to be joined by uh, John Kaufman, who is the Vice President for Business Development at Saab North America, who spent 30 years Hayes Gray and underway as a surface warfare officer. Sir, thanks for joining us. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Look forward to speaking with you. Um, so uh, we're standing in front of this, not coincidentally. So the Seros is uh, what you guys are displaying here. We're talking to companies about what's new and great here. Tell us a little bit about this system and, and how it applies uh, to the U.S. Navy and, and why you want them to buy it. Yeah, it's a uh, all-weather radar capability for fire control for both guns and also for missiles. So it can provide uh, high, high accuracy, uh, high revisit rate on targets. Uh, it has potential for the LCS program to improve the fire control. In fact, it's a uh, capability that's going to be incorporated in some of the international designs of LCS for some of our international partners. And um, what are some of the unique attributes of this system compared with other systems that are out there on the market? The unique thing about this system is the stabilization. And when you talk about fire control radar, stabilization is like game number one. Most important thing. Stabilized from the roll and movement of the ship. And, and how do you guys do it that's different from how other guys are doing it? Well, if you look down towards the bottom of this thing, you can see there's a truss shock absorber arrangement where it attaches to the hull of the ship. And that's really the secret you know, place where this takes place. And um, wh one of the challenges with systems like this is also weight, right? Because you generally have to put it pretty high on a ship and on a yes. smaller ship that, that'll cause some, some meta center problems, as I remember right. from naval architecture. Um, talk to us a little bit about weight, power, and, and how suitable it is for, say, a smaller ship application. Yeah, we do have this uh, particular radar capability on ships as small as 38 meters, which is pretty small. So uh, certain components are composite to reduce the weight, but again, you're right that you know the higher up you get in the ship, and the higher the weight is, that does create you know stability concerns. Right. But uh, this uh, capability uh, has a lot of flexibility, and we're able to accommodate it on most most uh, designs. And and what um, and how many of these are out in international service? Right, Saab always has this. You know, prides itself on. You know, we're using something that is. You know, w when you guys bring it to this market, you always want to have something that's proven and demonstrated. How many of these units are out there in service uh, now? There is probably they're in four generations, but there's over 200 of these units that are currently out there. And from a U.S. perspective, how large would this uh, program be for you guys in a in a U.S. Navy context? Well, the LCS program, if the Navy decides to increase the uh, fire control capability on their ships, uh, could go on to the frigate variant of the LCS, which I think now could be uh, 12 to maybe 20 ships, depending on how the program shapes up over the next couple of years. And is there anything else you guys are uh, showcasing here that you're proud of? Uh, yes, we have a wide array of underwater vehicles here that uh, get at mine countermeasures, uh, counter IED vehicles, and um, you know, both on the commercial and on the defense side. And we're seeing a lot of crossover between commercial technology and the underwater realm being very interesting to DOD. For example, where, where in particular is it interesting for DOD? Well, uh, commercial industry in the oil and gas uh, that we work with our vehicles has really gotten on the cutting edge of a lot of capabilities. And it's kind of a reversal of the normal uh, a modus operandi you might see where DOD is leading the technological edge. But now in the underwater realm for various reasons the commercial industry is really getting out there and DOD has really been, uh, it's caught their interest. And, and when you're talking about it from a commercial and gas standpoint, you're talking about you know, a, a pretty much a commodity, right? Where it's a few hundred thousand dollars, for example, as opposed to a couple of million dollars for a bespoke system. Correct. These are uh, lower unit cost items that can still manipulate large things like wellheads and things like that. I find that technology is pretty amazing. Yeah, we're looking at uh, subsea resident vehicles that can stay on the bottom of the ocean for up to a year, plug themselves into a garage, recharge themselves, download data, and upload new missions to go out on, and then return to the garage. That's uh, either the salvation for a submariner or its worst, or its worst nightmare. It could be, just like UAVs are for pilots. Exactly. Yeah. Sir, thanks very much. We really enjoyed it. All right. Well, thank you. I enjoyed the uh, discussions. Thanks a lot.